This is Genesis 8 hair. She is a Genesis 9 figure. Want to know how to put those two together? Stick around and watch my video. Welcome back, Daz Enthusiasts. Now tonight, I want to talk a little bit about Genesis 9 again. Now I've made a video in the past about Genesis 9 and whether I thought it was going to be a good replacement for Genesis 8. And back then I wasn't very satisfied with Genesis 9. And I have to say it has grown on me a little bit. Whoa, whoa, Milica, it's okay, don't worry, I'm not ever going to replace you. But I have found a few Genesis 9 figures that I like. For example, this girl here, I believe her name is Lema, and I really like her. So I want to start using Genesis more. But the big question is, how can I get the biggest bang for my buck? You know, the biggest problem that I hear, the most complaints that I hear from Daz users is the cost of Genesis 9 and the cost of trying to supply the character with everything that she needs. For example, purchasing hair and clothing and poses. All of those things that we have for Genesis 8, we don't want to spend that money for Genesis 9. And I told you one of my biggest fears with Genesis 8 is that they're going to slowly replace her and get rid of new items and Genesis 9 is going to take over. I have seen a little bit of this occurring, but I think it's only going to get worse you know, as Genesis 9 becomes more and more popular. So in my opinion, there's three big things that are keeping me from really using Genesis 9 more and more. Number one, it's Genesis 8 hair compatibility with Genesis 9 because we want to be able to use the products that we've previously purchased for Genesis 8. The second thing is poses for Genesis 8. We want to use those for Genesis 9. And the third thing is clothes. I want to use my Genesis 8 clothing for Genesis 9. Now in this video, I decided to limit my talk to hair. And there is some interesting things you can do with Genesis 9 using Genesis 8 hair. And there's some tricks that we can use so that we can take our Genesis 8 hair and actually use it on Genesis 9. And that's what I want to talk about for this video. I'm going to save the other two topics, posing and clothing, for another video. So let's focus on hair. So as you can see, I've got uh, Milica again, and she wasn't all that happy that I was proposing using a different character but she has been and always will be my mascot but I've got her classical hair which is kind of that ponytail that I like a lot and if you look at my Genesis 8 female hair I have a ton of hair I've kind of categorized it into different things long hair braided ponytails short hair and uh, let's look at our ponytail. This is the um, this is the hair that she's wearing right now, which is our loose pigtail hair from OOT. And don't forget, if you use OOT hair, you got to do that Daz Studio 4.22 hack. Otherwise, you might crash your Daz if you don't do that little trick. So check out that video if you haven't downloaded the replacement hair. I don't want you to have your Daz Studio crash on you. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this hair that's a Genesis 8 and we're going to try and add it to our Genesis 9 figure. So I'm going to go to Genesis 9 here and here she is. This is Lema. And I'm going to select her and we're just going to add this hair. Now when we do this we're gonna get a dialogue box. Okay, the hair kind of freaked out. It took a few minutes, but we got this dialogue box. And you know, if we just go ahead and follow it, we're gonna select it's from a Genesis 8 character. What type of item is it? Well, it is a 
hair that is shoulder length. So let's select those and click on it. And it's gonna think for a minute and it's gonna try and add this Genesis 8 hair to our Genesis 9 character. Okay, now it actually looks pretty darn good. So if we go back to our two figures, it looks really good. You know, one of the things I gotta imagine, look at the difference in the height from Genesis 8 to Genesis 9. I mean, there's like a five inch difference between these two characters. It's pretty crazy. I just can't get over that. Anyway, um, the hair looks pretty good. Now the problem that we have is moving this hair. So if they're just in this position, we can render it up. Let's do a quick eye ray. So in the eye ray, you can tell that it looks pretty good. I mean, I'm pretty happy with the hair. Just using our default fit tool, you know, it works pretty well. However, we're gonna have some limitations. What's gonna happen, let me go back into texture shaded. What's gonna happen is we won't be able to move the hair. And let me show you with this. I'm gonna go to my Milica character and let's kind of zoom in on her. And you can see that I can select different parts of the hair. So for example, I can select this ponytail and then I'm gonna have some options under my parameter tab. And see, I can rotate it, I can move it. And that's just how she works with um, the Genesis 8 character. Now, if I go to Genesis 9, I'm not going to be able to select those, which really sucks because once we pose her into a different position, we're not gonna be able to move the hair if it's cutting through her. Like you can see, it actually is kind of cutting through her. The hair goes longer than what we see. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to uh, delete this hair and we're gonna add the hair a different way. Alrighty, so what we're gonna have to do is something interesting. In order to properly add the Genesis 8 hair to my Genesis 9 character, I'm going to have to do this without a Genesis 8 character in the scene. And I'll show you why. If I take this hair, let's just get rid of that Genesis 8 hair altogether. All right, now I would normally add this hair back to my Genesis 9 character by just adding the hair into the scene not fitted to anything. So I would just deselect everything and then I can add my loose pigtails hair and it would just show up not fitted. However, if I have a Genesis 8 character in the scene, it's going to want to automatically, for some reason, try and attach to our Genesis 8 Milica. So you can see here it comes up with this box here that says select the items in the list below to replace with the item being loaded. So what it wants to do is it wants to just take our Milica character and replace her hair. All right, so we don't want this to happen. So when I cancel that out, we get our hair, but the hair is still linked to our Genesis 8 character. And I really don't understand why it's doing this. But what we're gonna have to do is get rid of our Genesis 8 character and so make sure you save. If you already have a scene set up, you can take your Genesis 8 character out um, and then add her back in, or you can just save your Genesis 9 as a subset and then put the hair on and then bring her back in. But just for the sake of ease, I'm gonna just take, and we're gonna get rid of Milica just for a few minutes. Don't worry, honey, we'll get you back. But I'm gonna just delete her. And see, once I delete her, that hair is going to now just be a free-floating hair. And it's kind of sitting above our Genesis 9. We need to take our Genesis 9 selector and then move her into her 
a pose. So I'm just gonna hit restore figure pose from my selection here. We're gonna uh, put her back in her A pose. And now you can see that the hair is just sitting above her head. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna adjust this hair. So I'm gonna select the hair and I'm going to move it in place. So I'm gonna lower it down until it's in an area that I like. And I'm gonna kinda of rotate around to make sure that it's in the side position and um, it looks pretty good. So I might need to adjust it a little bit. So you move it forward, move it back, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna get it where I like it. Now, once I like it, all we have to do is take this hair that's selected and add it manually to our Genesis 9's head. So see if I select her head, her head is right here in our parameters tab. So we've got our left shoulder, neck one, neck two, and then head. What I have to do is I have to select my hair and I'm just gonna drag it up to our Genesis 9 head. And so it's right here. Once I have it selected, I'm just gonna put it in the head folder. Now our hair is fitted and attached to our Genesis 9 character. And see, look, now I can move that hair like I was doing with my Genesis 8 Milica character. I can move it and move those ponytails. All right, pretty cool how that works. Um, and just to show you, I can pose her and the hair is attached. So the hair will just follow her pose. So let's just select a um, Genesis 9 pose here. This is the good one right here. I'm just gonna make sure she's selected. Let's choose her and see now her hair moves with her body and if I want to zoom in I know maybe I should have made her hair blonde or something because you can see it's kind of poking through her body we're just gonna be able to adjust it now just like we would if she was a Genesis 8 all right this is really cool and this can save you a lot of money let's add Milica back in and see if we can get a decent render Okay, so they're posed. Uh, I didn't put shoes on them. Maybe they um, are in Germany, you know, where you take your shoes off before you can go in the house. So they're uh, barefoot, but this looks pretty good. Milika has a new G9 friend. And, you know, this is just one way where we can use what we have for Genesis 8, put it onto Genesis 9, and create some good renders without spending more money. I think that's the big key is saving money and let's do that any way we can. You know, we could go and turn this non-deforce hair into deforce enabled, set that up, check out my tutorial on that as well, and simulate it so that the hair falls where we want it. I think this is okay, you know, in their poses. So we're gonna render it and then um, see what we get. All right, let's start the render. And I wanna thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and smash that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to comment. I'd love to hear what you have to say. In the not so distant future, we're gonna look at G9 clothes and G9 poses. Try and get that sorted out so we can use our Genesis 8 clothing and poses on Genesis 9. All right, let's see what we get here.